Hello there, and welcome back to another After School Special by the Tips Team. I'm Will Reyes, and today we'll be talking about a little tip that will help you close out or make inactive some meets that students might still be using from previous months or years. One thing to note is that uh, meets not made through classroom, those either made just on the fly or organized through a calendar invite, are able to be accessed by students immediately and remain active until at least 90 days after the last user has entered the meet. That means that some of those meets back from the spring may be active with students in them, and with the recent upgrade to Google Enterprise, you may be receiving attendance reports for meets that you were not in attendance for. What this means is that five or more students used a meet that you created in the past. The emails you will receive with these attendance reports will look like one of two. In this case, this meet references a code. That means that this code was likely made on the fly and shared with students through a link. This, this meet here was given a name and it has a date. This will indicate the calendar invite for which you invited the students to use this meet, which they have continued to use. Note that deleting the calendar invite for this event does not delete the meet or make it inactive. If the calendar invite is the meet that students are using, access your Google Calendar, find the original calendar invite with the same name, Note, you may need to use the calendar search feature for this. Clicking on the event will allow you to see the meet code that you will need to access in order to make this meet inactive or to restrict access. For meets where the code is provided, you will simply need to enter meet and use the code when, asked, when prompted. What this means is that for a student, for example, who may have this meet information from the past, they can still continue to access this. I will demonstrate this for you in a student account. Here we are transitioning to a student account. If the student has saved that meet code from the past, they can go ahead and simply join that meet without a staff member present, as you can see here. This means they can use this meet, invite other students, and access the content. However, staff now have a process by which to ensure that the students do not access this meet again. Switching back to our staff account, we simply take the code that is referenced in the attendance that has made us aware of this meet, go directly to meet.google.com, click the join or start meeting button, Paste the referenced code into the box and click Continue. If students are using this, they may be present. You may enter the Meet and tell them not to use it and tell them that you will be closing this Meet down. Click the Join Now button and now navigate to the bottom left corner where the host controls can be found. Open the host controls and turn off Quick Access. This means that all users who would like to join this meet in the future will only be able to do so with the permission of the host, which was you. Since you will not be in the meet of giving them permission, they should no longer be able to join. Let's test that by hanging up from the meet so that no staff member is present in this meet. Heading back to our student account, we will go back to our Google Meet we will again click the meeting code, paste in the same code that they just had used that worked, and click continue. Now, you'll see that instead of join now, they are prompted with an ask to join button. However, clicking this button doesn't work because you are not in the meet to permit them in. Effectively, this prevents all students from joining a meet that they don't have permission to as long as you have disabled quick access. Hopefully, this tip will help you um, limit students from using those meets without your permission and stop you from getting those attendance reports or having to filter them. Have a great day, and if you have interest in more content, please visit our website, tipstudypsb.ca, or visit our site and connect by searching for technology.